Welcome again friends. In this video we are going to talk about the DNA processivity and the importance of two different protein uh, importance of two different proteins which are called a sliding camp and a clamp loader proteins in case of DNA polymerase and the role of them in uh, the DNA replication process. Now in this case as we know now let's first talk about the DNA processivity. So what do we mean by DNA processivity? The DNA processivity is uh, termed uh, as uh, the addition of number of nucleotides before the falling of uh, of DNA polymerase from the DNA segment. So if this is a DNA segment and this is the DNA polymerase, the number of nucleotides that are going to be added by the DNA, this DNA polymerase before it falls off from this DNA template is called this DNA polymerase's processivity. Now the processivity uh, means uh, the ability or the affinity of this DNA polymerase to hold onto one template strand and carrying out the polymerization uh, for, for so long. Now if we are having higher processivity that means we are adding that means that polymerase is adding much more number of much more amount of uh, nucleotide sequences per second but if we are having a low negativity uh, low processivity of DNA polymerase that means it is adding a fewer uh, number of uh, nucleotide sequences per second. Now obviously it is beneficial to have the higher processivity of DNA polymerase because uh, if we are having the higher processivity that means we are, we are doing this replication really really faster in a particular time limit. Now in this case we are going to talk about two proteins one is a sliding clamp or it is also called the beta clamp and another protein which is called the clamp loader protein or as the name suggests it loads this beta clamp to this DNA polymerase. Now if we are talking about only DNA polymerase that DNA polymerase is not uh, having a higher processivity. So DNA polymerase is such a low processivity enzymes it cannot add uh, many nucleotides um, uh, per second but if it uh, it is carrying the clamp or beta clamp or the sliding clamp with itself then it can process the DNA really really faster or the processivity of this DNA will be increased if it is having the sliding clamp protein. Now for uh, having the sliding clamp protein it needs uh, the, 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 the help of another protein which is called the clamp loader protein. Now this clamp loader protein is helping this DNA polymerase to gain the sliding clamp. When it gain the sliding clamp this polymerase is no longer vulnerable uh, for, to fall off from the template strand. It, 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 is, it will hold on to this template strand that because of this beta clamp. Now as we know what clamps are doing, clamps are actually taking hold on to particular structures it is a linear structure of DNA clamp hold on to it and it will slide along from the 5 prime to 3 prime proceed a proceed pr direction and it, uh, it is keep adding uh, all those nucleotide sequences right so if you're looking at this picture it is uh, exactly what is happening in all these cases so this is the sliding clamp DNA polymers and this is the primer this is in green color and then the synthesis begins uh, this is in the orange color it is going on and on and right after some time so when it is finishing its job when it finishes its job polymers will kicked out and then the beta clamp will be will be cleaved out right now if we look at the beta clamp protein we will we will find a structure like this now this is the three dimensional models of all beta clamp proteins and we can see the alpha helix and as well as the beta sheet diagrams of this uh, of this beta clamp proteins now one thing we can uh, notice in all these cases of beta clamp proteins whether we're looking at prokaryotes or eukaryotes in all these cases there is a remarkable similarity in between all these structures sometimes in ca in case of e coli we can see only two different type of uh, this protein as you can see in this picture this is the uh, this is the clamp of uh, beta clamp of e coli now you can see it is made up with two different types of proteins and three subunit of each protein is uh, is involving so we are having the six subunits all together uh, to make a properly functional beta clamp in case of E. coli. In case of T4 phage as we are looking at in the second picture in case of T4 phage we are having also uh, the three different types of, uh, of uh, proteins not the two types three different types of proteins subunits but they are having only two two number of each subunits so we are having the six and finally if we look at in case of eukaryotic cells we are also seeing the sliding clamp is made up with uh, those kind of structures and it is also having three type of protein, protein. each of the protein are present in two uh, number 
right so we are all in all these cases we are having the six subunit proteins whether the, it is a uh, variety of two or variety of three now we can see the remarkable similarities that is actually telling us about the evolutionary origin of all these organisms right now if we look at uh, the structure of the sliding clamp we have we have seen this now if we look at the structure of this clamp loader protein now you can see something like that this is the structure of clamp loader protein now i am telling you one one important thing is that now if you need to do some extra bit of work like putting this clamp onto the DNA strand, you must put some energy from outsource. And the energy you utilize in case in inside a biological system is always present in ATP form, right? So we need ATP for doing or establishing this particular job. Now here we are looking at a structure which is having a middle row and two hand-like structures popping outside. Now this middle structure and hand structures all are closed in the very first or very beginning. Right after the addition of a uh, ATP molecule, it is getting activated and as a result of this activation, this head and uh, hand regions are now open. Now they are ready uh, for carrying their particular job of loading this beta clamp onto the DNA strand. Now what will they do? They are, they are taking this beta clamp with themselves and this is uh, the, the, the attachment region. This head is the attachment region and these hands are helping it to, uh, to, to cover up the whole DNA strands like this. So this is the replicatory DNA strands and this is the template strand which is opened up. Now it is just uh, keep on adding this beta clamp onto these DNA strands and right after the addition of this beta clamp the ATP ATP is hydrolyzed and right after the ATP hydrolysis uh, this clamp is getting uh, attached uh, tightly with this DNA strands and as we know the, uh, after right after the ligation or attachment of this uh, DNA clamp uh, or beta clamp protein there is no way this beta clamp protein will fall out and uh, right after this ATP hydrolysis another conformational shift takes place onto this clamp loader protein and this clamp loader protein will leave out along with this AT ADP uh, uh, binding with it and uh, phosphate or inorganic phosphate is generated right so this is the procedure of attachment of this beta clamp using this clamp loader protein now I am telling you another important thing about this clamp loader protein that is in, in case of E. coli or eukaryotic cells whatever you are looking at you can also find that this clamp loader protein is not uh, present in uh, on its own it is actually bound with a complex uh, type of enzyme complex type of uh, protein which is called uh, the DNA polymerase 3 in case of Escherichia coli now this DNA polymerase 3 is not uh, at all a single protein it is a bunch of different proteins uh, like this clamp loader protein or beta clamp and all these different proteins are come together to make a structure of this DNA polymerase now we call this DNA polymerase 3 now you can see we call this the DNA polymerase 3 hollow enzyme now as we have talked before uh, we've seen the picture of this green color molecule we have called it polymerase 3 polymerase 3 and all these cases so was it wrong the answer is no this this green subunits are only the core protein region of polymerase 3 but they are not functional until uh, they are, they are having all those uh, other type of enzymes uh, other type of regions or protein regions like this uh, tau proteins which is helping these two core regions together and also this clamp loader complex as we have seen before which is called also the gamma complex and is also need the sliding clamp proteins or beta clamp proteins so so along with all these things only this polymerase 3 uh, can act as a fully functional enzyme and it is called the hollow enzyme in that case right so it is having the core enzyme region and also uh, the uh, gamma complex or clamp loader complex and the sliding clamp and all these subunits as you can see it is made up with two core protein right so those two core proteins are attached with this gamma complex with the help of this tau protein now tau protein is holding this pol 3 core in both the hands and finally attach uh, them with, with uh, gamma complex and sliding clamp proteins so along with that this is called a polymerase 3 hollow enzyme and this polymerase 3 hollow enzyme is designed in such a way to keep on adding uh, the nucleotide sequences in both of the strands lagging and leading strands now in leading strand synthesis is going continuously that's why it's called the leading strand and in other hand the lagging strand synthesis is not getting continuously it is discontinuous due to its uh, due, 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 due to the fact that uh, DNA sequence or polymerization can only be added from 5 prime to 3 prime end and we are getting over this uh, um, this fault 
by creating a loop during this replication procedure we'll see it later and you can find this in my other videos too okay so this is a overall complex of dna polymerase 3 and you have seen the reasonable importance of this clamp loader protein and sliding clamp so except for the sliding clamp protein the processivity of dna is will not be that far uh, what, what we we can see now right so it is really important and i hope this video will help you to understand this thank you